So you want to uncover how you really feel. I'm a psychotherapist and I've helped so many of my clients identify their emotions by using this one tool. It is incredible and it's been available for a few years and honestly I'm still very surprised when people say that they've never heard of it before. But before we get there we're gonna go over what it means to sit with your emotions and if you've been to therapy before or maybe you've been exposed to you know mental health content on social media you've probably heard of the term and we're gonna look at some practical ways to identify how you really feel. Sitting with your emotions stems from mindfulness principles. Mindfulness is the act of staying and being in the moment. It's paying attention to the moment that you're in without adding any meaning, judgment, or reacting to it either. It may seem like those terms are fairly recent, but they've been available for hundreds of years and they stem from religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism, and Zen philosophy, which date about 2,600 years ago. If you want to read more about mindfulness, I would invite you to check out the blog post below. I've written more on the topic and it will give you some more information as to what that means practically and what are some of the steps that you yourself can take to practice mindfulness. Back to your emotions. When you're sitting with them, you allow yourself to feel and accept them as they are. For example, if you are feeling sad, although at the beginning you may want to understand why, your first goal would be to allow yourself to just be sad. Sadness looks different than all of us. Some of us may ugly cry in the mirror while others scream in their pillow when nobody can hear them. And some people shut down and they don't want to interact with anybody in that moment. Whatever that looks like for you, the goal is to allow yourself to experience it just as is in the moment. Those actions may be as short as 10 seconds or they may go on for a few minutes. The idea is not to fit one exact mold, but is to allow yourself to experience your emotion in a way that you are comfortable doing so. Let's look at some practical ways of identifying how you really feel. The first step is to notice that you are feeling something. This sounds extremely simple but it is something that a lot of us miss simply because we're dealing with our day-to-day -day lives. So an example of doing so is paying attention to when your mood shifts throughout the day. So let's say you were having a great day and all of a sudden you feel like the vibe changed and you're not responding to things the same way anymore. Your goal is really to notice that that shift is happening. In that moment, it's also helpful to recognize what's happening in your body. As we experience our emotions, our bodies are also physiologically responding to them as well. Meaning if you you are angry, frustrated, or sad, there will be physical cues from your bodies that will be a reflection of what you're feeling. If you're happy, you probably will be smiling and joyously interacting with people around you. If you're sad, you may start crying, or if you're afraid, you might feel like your heart is beating out of your chest. So those are all cues that our bodies are giving us as a result of an ex emotion that we're experiencing as well. The second step is to figure out what you're feeling, meaning naming it, adding a word to the emotion that you're experiencing. Let's get this out of the way right now. Fine is not an emotion. When someone asks you how you're doing and they can clearly see that you're not doing well, you tell them fine, you know, it may be a way to quickly dismiss it and show them that you don't want to engage it. It's not an accurate way of describing the emotion that you're experiencing. An emotion is a chemical release as a result of how we interpret a specific situation or trigger. It takes our brain one fourth of a second to identify the trigger and one fourth of a second to release the chemicals that lead to an emotional reaction. This is why we often hear that emotions are temporary because they often last about about a few seconds to a few minutes at most. Emotions are important as they provide information about the world around us and how we should adapt depending on the situation. One tool that I like to use to identify emotion is the emotion wheel. It's a clear way to identify what we feel and what we need. There are different variations of this, but the one that I like to use specifically in my therapy sessions is from the Junto Institute and I will be sure to link it below. So right now, I'm gonna show you guys a preview of what that looks like. So as you can see, the wheel has different wedges at its center that describe our basic emotions, such as love, joy, sadness, anger, fear, and surprise. So if we were to zoom in on this a little bit, let's say if we're looking at joy, what we'll see is that within the joy wedge, there are other wedges within it that can describe how we feel more specifically. So that can be excited, optimistic, proud, cheerful, happy, content, and peaceful. And within love, there are other 
words that describe those feelings as well. So it's grateful, sentimental, affectionate, romantic, and enchanted. And within the romantic wedge, we have enamored and passionate. Within the sentimental one, we have tender and compassionate. So these are ways that we can describe how our emotions. And this is useful because let's say you're having an overall good day and you're in a good mood and you're feeling joy or love, then you're able to have more specific ways to describe how you really feel and really highlight that state of being for you as well. For more in-depth breakdown of the emotion wheel, I would also suggest that you guys check out the Human Systems website. They have a different variation and a different way of breaking it down where they consider both comfortable and uncomfortable emotions. So comfortable emotions such as love and joy, uncomfortable emotions such as sadness and anger. The third step is to think of why you may be feeling this way. So let's say you've narrowed it down to feeling insecure. There are different questions that you want to ask yourself to really have an idea of what was going on for you. So you can start by thinking of what happened, right? So think of what was the situation, what was going on around you that contributed to you feeling insecure. Who were you with? Were you around people that you didn't know? Were you around people that typically make you nervous? Were you around people that maybe they're more advanced than you and to in comparison to them, you feel a bit small? So you want to think about who you were with, what was happening at the time, where were you? Those are all cues really to give you a bit more information as to how you're feeling and why you may be feeling that emotion. An example of this could be, I'm feeling insecure because this is my first time going to the gym, I don't know what I'm doing and I feel like people are looking at me funny. If this is the case, okay, so you, you know what the situation is, the situation is that you're going at, at, to the gym, you're a beginner, maybe you've never used those machines before and you don't know what you're doing. So this gives you a bit more context as to what's happening for you in the moment so that you really are able to understand why this is something that is triggering the specific reaction for you. Although you may be feeling that, let's say people are looking at you funny, and this may not be a reflection of what's truly happening. One thing that's important for you to remember is that your emotions are valid. Your feelings are valid. They are yours. No one can take them away from you. But it's also remembering that, as we mentioned before, our emotions tend to be temporary and they tend to last a few seconds to a few minutes. And as you're really analyzing what's happening for you, that can also help you break down what is real from what maybe your mind has made up based on previous situations uh, similar to this that you've experienced before that have led you to feel that exact same way. The fourth step is to think of what you need. So at this point, you've been able to notice that you're feeling something. You have the words to describe what you're experiencing in the moment. You've thought about why you're feeling this way. Now it's to think about your needs in order for you to feel better moving forward. So if we were to go back on the example that I gave before of feeling insecure at the gym because you're a newbie, something that could be helpful would be for you to feel confident confident so that you can consistently continue with your workouts. So what you can do could be planning your workouts ahead of time so that you have a better idea of what to do and how to use the machines so that you don't feel like people are looking at you because you're not using the machine the way that you think that you should be using it. It could also be that you bring a friend with you and maybe that leads to you feeling a bit more comfortable of having someone that you know there that is going to be able to support you as well. As I'm ending this video, one thing that I really want to highlight is that this thing time. It's going to take time for you to get used to this, to get used to paying attention to when your mood shifts throughout the day. It's going to take time to notice what's happening in your body and really to be using the correct word to identify how you feel. And that's okay. If someone asks you how you're doing and you find yourself going back to the emotion wheel to really have the words to describe how you feel to that person, that's fine too. Uh, if you've never done it before, don't expect to just know it from the start and to know you know all of the words in the emotion wheel. I personally go back to it regularly both with my clients and personally to really highlight what is it that I'm feeling. I hope you guys find this video useful and I will see you in my next one.